So now we're at the place where we're learning about how to go from a standard to a unit to a lesson. Um, and we always, well, one of the reasons we do this is because we know that there's an achievement gap. So if we don't start where our students are and when we're planning, then we could be actually uh, missing some, some pretty important steps on helping them get to the final place, which is uh, meeting the learning objectives and the, um, the common core standards for the state and everything. Um, so we, of course, plan our instruction based on anal our analysis of student needs. Um, we then create some sort of unit, and then from the unit, we start working on our lesson plan. So this is a nice graph of the, let me just move this down a little bit, whoops. Um, a nice graph of the, um, achieve, oof, the achievement gap. And he, down here it says grade in school, and this is achievement in grade. And you can see to start out with first, second grade, everyone seems to be doing really well. And then what ends up happening is that you would think that on the seventh grade, you would be at the seventh grade of performance. Uh, 11th grade, you'd be at 11th grade of performance. But what they found is that students with disabilities, students of color, students in poverty, and English language learners, they start plateauing off. And they don't, um, they don't make the improvements that they need to uh, as far as their, their um, uh, peers who don't have the same diverse learning needs. And so it's our job as teachers to help uh, make this gap smaller. And so how do we do that? Well, one way is to create a unit plan. So I'm going to go back to, um, and in the unit plan, there's these uh, five major pieces. So one is a class profile, another one's an environmental assessment, taking a look at the curriculum and resources, coming up with some goals, and then, of course, the task analysis um, assessments and strategies that you're going to use. So you start out and you say, okay, hmm, I teach fourth grade. So I've just pulled up for this example, I'm looking at the um, social studies uh, framework, social sciences framework for uh, California public schools. Now, just so you know, they are redoing this, but you can go through and I actually had this all done, but so now I've skipped to grade four, and you can see grade four is about California, a changing state. And now I've skipped even further down, and it goes through and gives you a little narrative about the expectations of grade four in California. And so we've got the physical settings, we've got exploration, and then they go through and they give you the actual standards. So here's standard 4.1. And you can see that there's five sections to standard 4.1. So that's where I started in my unit plan, was I first looked at my class profile. So here we go. We've got the class profile. And um, some of the things that we can look at in a class profile are grade level, range of ability levels, IEPs, goals um, pertaining to the, whatever the topic is, um, ELL and CELT levels, so what are their self scores, um, any student strengths, interests, and needs. And this is just an example that I um, created, and basically we've got Miss Jones, she's a fourth grade teacher, 29 students, seven have disabilities, four are English language learners with a self score of four. I actually list out the disabilities that each one has. Talk about the strengths um, that they actually do well with cooperative groups. Um, 22 of the 29 do well. Um, they can use search engines, so 25 of them can do that. They have oral presentation skills. Um, they some need or some uh, write with appropriate grammar and spelling. That's about 12, so it's a little bit low. Um, 10 of them have low vocabulary, and um, and six of them have difficulty working independently. Um, I said that the students' interest, because I did some sort of inventory at the beginning of the year, are the Warriors basketball team, the class pet turtle, and using the computer. Um, then you can take a look at their environmental, um, uh, the environmental assessment in your classroom, and this could be any resources available, support staff, and also the setup of the room, the physical setup of the room. So once again, we're with Mrs. Jones, um, in the fourth grade classroom, um, it says it's typical of an elementary school in a district 
four computers available for the teacher and student. These computers have internet connection and are equipped with standard software for word processing, spreadsheet manipulation, and graphic processing. The desks are set up in groups of five with one group of four, uh, which allow for stations. And there's two para-educators in the room most of the time. However, one of the para is assigned to the student with ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder. Next is a curriculum um, resources. So this is what has the district adopted, any sort of supplemental materials, and any online programs. So, um, I said the district uses the adopted um, California um, uh, state standards, the Common Core standards, um, that they have a social studies, a district adopted social studies textbook, and that there's also supplemental readings for grades one through six, and they have access to multiple free online programs and leveled reading. Here's some goals. So I actually just pulled out right from here the California Standard 4.1. So there's Standard 4.1 with all five of the little sections. And then um, you should also think about language goals, especially with uh, English language learners um, and students with special needs or diverse needs. Um, they often need additional support um, around language. So here, uh, the students are working on vocabulary development, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And the vocabulary development is being done through a word wall. Um, there's supplemental, leveled supplemental readings um, to help them with their reading levels. Um, sentence starters and graphic organizers to help them with writing. And they also do presentations and give feedback. Um, and that's where they practice their speaking and listening. Um, so next is the uh, task analysis. Um, so this is actually looking at your unit. So you're gonna do a task analysis, which we talked about a few weeks ago, how that's really taking a big idea, such as the California State Standard, which has a lot of components of it, and you break it down into manageable pieces, um, a kind of a step-by-step -step process that hits all the important pieces, but you're not trying to teach that all in one day or one lesson. And then you also think about what assessments you would need to do, and then also what strategies you would want to use. So here I created a chart. Um, so one thing, the first thing I did was the task analysis. So I broke down all the different sections. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, into five uh, sections here on the on the side. And then I thought, okay, well, what are the steps that I would need to um, kind of take, teach those same concepts? And so I kind of broke it down. I combined the, um, the elements um, in ways that made sense to me. So for example, um, I started out with introducing the world map, then introducing the California map, and here I would talk about the regions, but I would also talk about the state capital because that's part of the standard as well. Um, and then I would have them label, you know, like the Pacific Ocean, some major rivers, valleys, mountain passes maybe. And so once I know that they have a visual concept of California, then I would move into them learning a little bit more about um, the different regions. And um, I went online as well to um, for creating a map and you can use uh, scribblemaps.com and then I found out that Napa Museum, uh, Napa Valley Museum actually offers Napa Museum in the classroom where you can order um, these units that address the state standards um, to support your students in learning and they have different artifacts uh, for the different topics. Um, I also looked at, okay, well if they were able to um, create or, or learn from that, and I could see them as far as an assessment goes, creating a graphic organizer, then if they had to write a thank you letter, kind of pulling out the important information, that that would be a good demonstration. Next, um, I have them do a graphic organizer um, for understanding the geographical elements. We have a lot of um, writing out there that uh, goes over these different things. So. Um, and some of the strategies would be like leveled homogenous reading groups, um, you know, the graphic organizer, like I mentioned, um, you know, uh, relating things to your background knowledge um, or creating, um, building background knowledge uh, in the classroom. 
And then, of course, we have the using the maps and charts and pictures to describe how communities in California vary in land use, vegetation, wildlife, etc. And um, some of the ways that we could do this is we could have all the students create a poster uh, for the different areas and you know, providing examples and non-examples, resources, multiple resources, um, cutouts so that they aren't trying to create images um, uh, from scratch, but rather they're able to really focus on them. So next I went into the lesson plan. Now this is the lesson plan that, um, that you are given to use um, from Toro. And so it's got all of these different sections in there that I'm not gonna go into too deeply. Uh, but one thing I did add was the PSYOP teaching strategies. Um, let me just move my face down there. Uh, the PSYOP teaching strategies um, to help you think about these strategies as you're writing your lesson plan. Um, and also remember to include the technology um, in your plan as well. The other piece um, that we would go into I want to make sure that you're familiar with is the summarize of the lesson anticipated difficulties and plans to reduce these difficulties. Uh, this is important because this class is about making sure that everyone's included. Then we have the intro through and beyond um, and here you'll notice the adaptations um, and then of course the reflection. Now you won't be able to do this until you've actually implemented your lesson plan but it's still really helpful to have. Uh, so what I've done for you is I actually created an example lesson plan. Let me just pull this all the way up that I have attached here. And you can see it's for social studies. It is grade four, understanding the California map. Uh, it'll be about 60 minutes, so it could be one or two days, depending on um, your students. Um, I have just the first part of the, um, I have the standard here, but I'm only really looking for this unit, uh, or for this lesson, I'm only looking at one of the areas, which was getting to know the state capital and also describe the regions. Um, and so I've got the learning goal here, and then I have the student goal below that, the three types of assessments that I'll be doing, and then also the connection to the previous. So this is the third of three lessons, or I mean, five lessons that I broke up on my um, on my unit plan, and so this is the third lesson. So um, I have my instructional materials, and I've checked just in, with an X the different um, PSYOP teaching strategies that I'll be using. Uh, for here, I have summarized the lesson in one sentence. Basically, students will identify the state capital and regions in California. That's whole group. They'll add vocabulary to the wall. They'll complete a graphic organizer on the geology um, and information they find out about the regions, that's a small group, and then they will write a thank you letter to the museum and that's individualized. Um, as I mentioned, here's the anticipated difficulties and the plan to reduce those difficulties. And then I went through and I created my lesson. And I'm not gonna go through this too much, but just uh, you have, you have it uh, PDF'd in this unit. But you can see that I kind of went through and broke down the um, intro, the um, through, and then the beyond. I said how I would be helping my students and coming up with different things. And of course, as I mentioned, you would have to do the post-lesson uh, reflection later. Um, so this basically takes you through, and I have posted this um, sample, um, lesson plan on uh, Toro or on Blackboard. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I am always here to help you. Thank you.